uh, also I got offer from RCGM and I was working over there. So mm-hmm. while I was working over RCGM, the uh, Amazon recruiter uh, got in touch with me. What was your preparation like and how did you get started with data science and, and uh, algorithms? What would be your one last uh, message to someone who is entering college right now? and uh, they are dreaming to get into top tech companies to work as a software developer over there. Hey, welcome back everyone. I'm Ishan Sharma. And in this video, I want to answer some of your biggest doubts, some of your biggest questions related to data structures and algorithms and competitive coding. With me, I have Riti Datta. And in this video, he'll just be sharing his complete journey of how he got into Amazon. Okay, this would be a very interesting interview for all of you to listen to because he'll be sharing his exact journey in which year did he start to uh, you know learn about DSA and cognitive coding and what was that complete journey like, what was the challenges he faced, what are the mistakes he made and he will also be answering some of your most frequently asked questions about cognitive coding. So I hope this video will be exciting for all of you. Make sure that you subscribe to this channel and share this video with a friend of yours who also wants to get into the big tech companies. And as always, let me know in the comment section below if you enjoyed this uh, video or not. Also make sure that you like this video. And with that said, now let's get started with this podcast episode. Hey, welcome back everyone. I'm Ishan Sharma and I would like to welcome you all to another podcast episode. With me today, I have Riddhi to share his journey of how he got into Amazon. So, hey bro, welcome back and how are you doing? Yeah, I'm fine and happy Diwali to all, all your viewers and you as well. Thank you so much. Happy Diwali to you too. Let's jump right into today's topic, which is how did you uh, got into Amazon as a software developer? I think this is something really interesting and everyone would like to hear from you, your complete journey. So please get started with that. Yeah. So basically, uh, first of all, a bit of uh, my background. So I've done my BTEC in computer science uh, in from UM Kolkata. Mm-hmm. I've recently graduated. I passed out last year. So basically, I was I started with a service-based company uh, called Epam Systems. I was basically working as a back-end developer over there. So after that, uh, I was preparing for this product-based company uh, side by side. So I gave a couple of interviews uh, as soon as I became one year experienced. Uh, so I got a couple of offers from product companies like Just Pay, Delivery. Uh, also, I got offer from RCGM and I was working over there. So mm-hmm. while I was working for RCGM, the uh, Amazon recruiter uh, got in touch with me that they would be like whether I would be interested for the SD1 position and I immediately said in yes. Uh, so I gave an interview for Amazon for the SD1 position and I got an offer for their Alexa team and I would be joining there sometime in December mm-hmm. uh, in Hyderabad. All right and, and this would be yeah, uh, what was the in- interview experience like? Okay, uh, so for Amazon, uh, there are five rounds for software development engineer one uh, after your uh, re- uh, like your CV shortlisted. Uh, so first round is the online coding round, which happened over AMCAT. Uh, then uh, there were four technical rounds. The first two technical rounds were mainly based on data structures and algorithms. Mm-hmm. Uh, after I cleared those two rounds, there was the bar razor round, which was taken by a very senior Amazon professional. And he asked me questions from DS Algo as well as my projects as also he focused a lot on the behavioral part as well. And uh, next was the hiring manager round where he asked me a lot of CS fundamental questions. He gave me a lot of behavioral questions and situations. And he also asked a lot about my projects and my professional experience. So I've also shared uh, the Amazon experience. Uh, I will put that in description. You can put that in description. That will, sure. uh, I think, help a lot of you. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, how was it different this time? Because, you know, we have this lockdown situation going on. So was there any difference when you were interviewing? Yeah, so basically, uh, all of the interview was conducted virtually. Uh, yeah. So, uh, like, uh, uh, I, I didn't face much of a uh, difficulties, to be very honest, because, uh, you know, what happens, you know, uh, when you are going on site is that you have to wait. First of all, have to, there is a long waiting time because there are other people who is interviewing with you. But here you have a specified time, right? I mean, you you are given a specified time and date and you are, you know, you are, you are well prepared and you can sit at that time. Yeah. And also, I think uh, the main important thing, uh, the I think what really worked for me is that when you are giving, going for on-site, you are, you know, uh, like coding in pen and paper. Here you're coding 
on a computer maybe you're not given an id a proper id where you can you run your code and stuff like that but at least you are given a uh, like a virtual uh, a computer where you can at least you know like if you are making any mistakes you can provide hit the backspace and delete and then again write which is something it's very it gets very messy when you are doing it in pen, pen and paper and interviewer obviously he also gets irritated on seeing code like that so that is yeah. a thing which really helped me i think uh, the virtual interviews apart from that uh, the process was pretty much the same and i didn't find much of difference so these were the mm-hmm. two main points what i felt was really advantageous for me all right so now let's take a step back and uh, talk about what was your preparation like and how did you get started with data science and uh, algorithms what were the resources and yeah tell me about this okay uh, so i think uh, first of all uh, for the resources i think it's uh, everyone knows about it like for computer coding hacker rank code chef code courses hacker dot and all these things are the lead code and i think it's everyone knows about it uh, but uh, like uh, for my journey i think i mainly started uh, with competitive coding um, back in my fifth semester uh, so uh, at that time i started with code chef uh, so uh, I used to mainly give the I started with the code chef long challenge uh, basically because since I was a beginner I was not very much into competitive coding so you know what happened uh, in code chef long challenge uh, what happens you have a contest for 10 days uh, which really helps for the, uh, for the beginners in a way because you know you get a lot of time to think about a problem and then solve it Let's you don't know a particular algorithm to solve that problem. You can go on go, uh, go on Google and read it, read about the algorithm, and then you can learn it, solve a couple of problems, and then you can you know come back and solve that problem. So you know. you get a time to think about the problem and really get it i mean you can really think hard and that really helps you and uh, enhances your skill uh, so i did that and I, and i think i did code chef long challenge for around 5 to 6 months uh, and i also checked that whether i'm improving or not let's say in the first time i'm able to solve three problems in the contest i'm checking that in the next contest how many more problems i'm able to solve mm-hmm. so i kept a tap on that also i there were two more contests on code chef that used to happen like the a uh, short contest like the cook off and uh, the uh, i think the lunch time these are the two co- coach chef short contest uh, i also used to give that con- those contests as well because you know in those contests they they are usually time bound you have there's a 3 hour contest where you have to you know uh, like that there you don't get the time or there if you, you, you don't know the particular thing you don't have much time to go and read about that and implement as you can do in long challenge but you know it it is something important as well because uh, It, it like you have to solve within a specified time frame and that is something very similar to an interview because in interview would be given a specific uh, 30 minutes at max uh, to solve a particular problem mm-hmm. uh, so apart from that there were also some contest on code forces uh, i used to do, uh, give but, but i didn't give much contest on code forces uh, mainly i used to do code chef hacker rank and hacker at these three uh, and what i did was like when i was unable to solve a problem after the contest i i went up and uh, upsolved those problems like i used to check the solutions and it should take the editorials and once i was okay with the solution let's say if i learn a new thing what i would do let's say i learn a new data structure let's say tries so what i will do i will go and check out different problems on tries and i will actually go and solve those problems based on tries so no so what happens is like when i'm seeing any particular data structure any particular algorithm i try to solve the more related problem to that so the next time i face that problem i will to you know come up with the solution pretty fast mm-hmm. yeah so that's about my competitive coding journey and what year did you get started Uh, I started late in my fifth semester, but I would uh, uh, suggest the students not to start so late. Uh, probably once I think uh, for competitive coding, I think or data structure and algorithms, if you know one language really, really well, I think you can get started with that. But it's very important, you know, to get. Uh, Uh, like have a grasp on any one particular language, preferably C plus plus Java or Python. And once I think you are uh, comfortable with that, you are good to go with uh, DSA and competitive coding. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now the one question that people have is uh, how important are projects? And as you've mentioned that they also to, uh, have taken a look at your projects that you've mentioned in your resume. So tell me a little about what were your projects and uh, like what should be the level of projects that that someone should be focusing on to create. so mainly i was a back end developer so most of my projects were based on back end development and one was on full stack uh, so basically i have done some web related projects but that doesn't mean that you have to do only web related projects only like you can do machine learning projects and you, you should do projects on the from the domain that should interest you but most importantly you should know the in and out of those projects and what you have done uh, because you know a lot of questions will be asked from those projects and i have written a medium article as well like what are the questions that you can uh, expect i think I probably i'll give it link that in the description. description yeah yeah 
Yeah, so that will give them more clarity, like what questions to expect from the projects. Uh, so basically, what is very important, well, obviously projects are really, really important because you know when the your CV is getting shortlisted, uh, they will check your coding profiles, your work experience, and also your projects, what projects you have done, right? And uh, Amazon really focuses a lot on projects because I remember in the bar is and also in the hiring manager round, they grilled me a lot on projects. So the, in, from projects, they ask you behavioral type of questions, like let's say when you were working on this project with a team, uh, what are the, uh, like uh, did you face any challenge where there was a conflict with the team member on how do you deal with that so there are a lot of behavioral aspects that are there mm -hmm. with those uh, uh with those project related questions and also there are technical related questions as well uh so yeah projects are really important uh you can speak any domain of your liking but make sure you have a uh, you know good technical knowledge about that thing you should be aware what of is the bar raiser uh, that, that you've mentioned what does that really mean okay uh, so Amazon have introduced uh, recently this bar raiser round where I, uh, where uh, basically, uh, as far as my knowledge goes, uh, it's it's taken by a, a person who is working in Amazon for like uh, uh, for more than a decade, uh, and he, he and he is a person who is you know independent of the hiring team. Like uh, uh, he has the veto power to reject a candidate even if the other pan panelists are, uh, are saying that it's it's okay to hire this candidate. So it's a very very important round, and he will focus on on a lot of aspects, not only data structure algorithm but he also focuses on your behavioral part on your project so basically he's a very very experienced professional with a, a big say in a reject in, in your selection process mm -hmm. all right so one question that i get asked a lot of times is uh, should they learn dsa from the first year itself and uh, they just ask me should they focus on software development in first year of college should they focus on See, DSA, said, cognitive coding okay uh, so first of all to get started with dsa and competitive coding as i said that you have to be very very good with one language right because there are people who comes up uh, come up to me and says that you know i i can get the logic but i am not able to translate the code into uh, logic into my code mm -hmm. it's just because they don't have the grasp of the particular language it's very important that you have a grasp from any one of the languages preferably as i said c plus plus java or python but it can be anything else as well so it's very important that you have a grasp about one language and once you have uh, that graphs i think you can get started with dsa and competitive coding uh, and coming back to your question uh, about whether you should do software development and competitive coding what i feel is you should do a bit of both uh, but pre preferably your focus as a student or a fresher should be a little bit more on data structure and algorithms and competitive coding because you know as a fresher you would just mostly on that part uh, so if you want to give me a weightage, probably I will say 70% weightage in competitive coding, DS algo, and 30% weightage on projects, but projects are really important and you just can't neglect them. That is also mm -hmm. very, very important. Okay. So how much time does it take for a person to, for, for you specifically from a beginner, uh, to becoming a five-star code chef, uh, you know, how, how much time does it take? Okay. So like, uh. When I started with CodeChef, uh, at least I was uh, I was proficient with two coding languages that was C++, C and Java. Uh, so language was not a barrier for me, like given an algorithm or given a logic, I was able to translate that into code very efficiently. So that was mm -hmm. least of my concern. What was my concern is to come up with a solution, with an optimal solution. So uh, so when I started, I uh, like I had this you no know, grasp on these languages. But yeah, like after that, when I started with competitive coding, it took me around four to five months to get five star. Five star. But I think it's it's it, de it depends on the individual. Some might uh, get that in three months. Some for some it will take it might it might, it might take up to nine months. So it depends actually. There is no specific timeline for that. It's better if you start early actually. So it obviously helps. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, what are your future plans? Uh, once you get into Amazon, what are you expecting over there? You already worked at Arcesium, right? So what was the environment yeah. over there? Uh, so basically, I, I mean, Arcesium work culture is really great. And uh, like, obviously, when you're working from, you don't get that feel. Uh, like, as you, uh, as when you will be working in uh, in the office, that's a different feel altogether, sitting with all the techies and the team members. Uh, but yeah, so far, it's been great. And I'm hoping to same in Amazon as well, looking for mm -hmm. some good work and challenging work. I have been seeing a lot of your uh, posts on LinkedIn where you just talk about, uh, you know, a lot of the questions that people have. What was your motivation to start posting on LinkedIn? Because, you know, I myself have been creating a lot of content on LinkedIn recently. So I'm just curious. Uh, so basically, you know, like, uh, first of all, I, I found out that, uh, like, there are a lot of people who are, uh, like, mess direct uh, messaging me over LinkedIn and a lot of other social media platforms, like how do get started and those you know those questions are very very repetitive uh so i felt that you know like since everyone has this same set of repetitive questions uh it's better to you know post so that everyone can see instead of replying to each and each one of them so that was one motivation and obviously uh for giving back to the community that is you know that is also the most important thing 
All right. What are your tips for people who want to get into these companies for having a good resume? Yeah, resume is very important because it's the entry point. Like uh, because if your resume is not good and you are not shortlisted, the recruiter probably won't get an interview chance. At least for the uh, at least for the experienced candidates, I'm telling you this. At least if you're even six to seven months of experience, have exp- uh, six to seven months of experience, or at least one year of experience, resume becomes very very important. Unless and until that, uh, like companies visiting a campus, that's a different story altogether. But uh, I think resume is very very important for you to get shortlisted. So make sure that you know you uh, tell the uh, work that you have done, you have showcase your projects, and also you give your uh, uh, competitive coding profiles as well so that's i think these three are very important for you to highlight in a resume I'll, yeah mm-hmm. all right what would be your one last uh, message to someone who is entering college right now and uh, they are dreaming to get into top tech companies to work as a software developer over there <laughs> So my message would be if you are just getting into the college, don't panic too much. Uh, just try to explore a lot of domains because, you know, just because you're learning, uh, you're hearing a lot of machine learning or reading a lot of web development. Don't just, you know, yeah, it's good to hear a lot of things, but, you know, you have to explore on your own and you have to check out yourself that which domain interests you and just try to follow your passion. Uh, but doing that, uh, please ensure that you are not, uh, you know, uh, neglecting the basics like data structures, algorithms and uh, knowing a language well. Uh, or, or basic subjects like DBMS operating system because these things are sometimes asked and in and in a quest to solve the problem solve DS algo competitive coding we sometimes tend to neglect these sort of subjects uh, but no these subjects are really important and sometimes are also asked in interview. One question that I wanted to ask is how important is CGPA for getting selected because right now I have like a very trash CGPA in my college so I was just uh, curious about that. No 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 I th- I think uh, if you are applying for off campus I don't think CGPA do matter at all for me it okay. didn't matter though i had a good cgpa but i don't think it matters at all uh but i think i've heard that cgpa does matter for people where companies are visiting on their campus mm-hmm. so then uh cgpa becomes an important part if the companies are visiting on campus so i think that is very specific to tier one tier two college people but for tier three people where you know they, all they have to depend on is on campus placements and uh full campusing a uh, cgpa does not play uh, any role i think at least for me it didn't play any role all right, bro. Thank you so much for joining me. Guys, if you have any questions, you can ask him on his socials. I will link his LinkedIn, his Instagram in the description. So all of you can take a look at that. And uh, yeah, bro, I wish you all the best for your journey in Amazon. And yeah, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you.